Ci troviamo a Roma in occasione di un incontro molto importante organizzato dalla IOF, l'International Osteoporosis Foundation. L'occasione è la presentazione del rapporto SCOP, un'indagine paneuropea sull'osteoporosi. Ne parliamo col professor John Kennis, una vera autorità in materia e colui che ha messo a punto il FRAX, che è l'indicatore più utilizzato al mondo per stabilire la gravità e i fattori di rischio di osteoporosi di una determinata persona. Professor Kennis, you are here to present SCOP, this uh, multinational uh, analysis of osteoporosi. Which is exactly this project? in which it consists. Okay, SCOPE, or the scorecard for osteoporosis, is a multidimensional tool. Healthcare is very complex, and we need for each disease to see how one country performs compared to another country. So what we've taken is several indicators of the performance for osteoporosis. What is the size of the problem? What is the lifetime risk? What is the policy framework, how do governments handle osteoporosis, what is the service provision, are there enough equipment to diagnose osteoporosis, and what is the uptake of that service provision, how many women or men with osteoporosis actually get treatment. So we've devised 20 indicators, looked at these in all the EU 27 countries, and, given and scored them. And we've scored the performance as red, orange, or green red for bad, orange for in between, and green for good. Which is in the, in the green area? Which are the nations in which osteoporosis is well treated? Well, for example, in Spain, the, uh, a lot of people at risk get treated. Spain has a relatively low fracture rate, so that's good. But if you look at the other extreme, Sweden has the highest fracture risk in the world today and the treatment gap in that country is very large. So it shows the inequities and imbalance of approaches to osteoporosis. More should be done in Sweden to try and catch up with Spain. And uh, you have an idea of the reason of that? It's organizational or it depends from the weather because uh, Spain is a sunny state and is not uh, the case for Sweden? Yes, we, we, we don't understand the differences in risk between countries. Part of it may be related to being in the north, having less sunlight, but that doesn't alter the fact that they have a problem. You can't move uh, all the Swedes to Spain. You have to tackle the problem in the country. So SCOPE provides this way of very easily identifying your performance in a particular country, and I hope is a tool to help harmonize the approach to osteoporosis on an EU level, but also as a national leverage to say we as a country should be doing better in regard to this or that. Uh, um, a question regarding FRAX, uh, the algorithm you have invented, uh, which is the situation? It is used uh, all around the world uh, and uh, you are, are you still developing it? In a, in a, are you still improving the okay. indicator? Yeah, FRAX is a system for measuring, assessing fracture probability. What is the likelihood that you would sustain a fracture in the next 10 years? It has to be country specific because as we've just mentioned, the risk varies in different countries. So we know we need to have information on the risk in that particular country. Every six months or so, we enlarge the number of models that are available as new information becomes available. So we now have about 50 countries which have a country-specific FRAX model. It's now being widely used. It's been adopted in the guidelines of 17 of the 27 member states within a relatively short period of time. Um, and approximately 3 million patients have calculations done each year. So it's a very good result. Well, I think it's a pleasing result, but... An important question is, is it enough? And just like BMD is not utilized enough to measure osteoporosis, FRAX is not used enough to assess fracture risk. So some countries are high users and some are low users. And we need to improve the standards across the board, but in particular make sure that the low users become high users.